G'day, this is Christine from Gecko Gully Websites. My friend Sandy has asked how can she use Gravity Forms on a WordPress uh, website installation to effectively set up a shopping cart to be able to sell stuff on PayPal. Um, she wants to be able to add an image and a product and uh, have it work like a shopping cart so it actually sends sales to PayPal. Now this is um, this video I'm making is for general consumption not necessarily just for my clients. Um, most of my clients who need a shopping cart will be using WooCommerce or KubeCart but this is a way that you could add a um, simple cart like appearance to a website if you don't want to go to all the effort of um, having a full-blown shopping cart. You do need to have what's called a uh, Gravity Forms developer license because you're going to need to add the PayPal add-on to that. Um, the developer license is not cheap but um, it has a lot more functionality than just the, um, the PayPal add-on. Now, so once you have your Gravity Forms software installed, you will go to Add-ons and you will find the PayPal add-on, which is down here somewhere. PayPal add-on. There's also Payma PayPal Payments Pro and PayPal Pro. I'm just using the regular PayPal add-on and I've already um, installed, uh, I've already clicked the install button like that and it's been activated. So that's already done. The next thing you need to do is you will need to go to settings and go to the PayPal tab and then in here you're going to need to change some settings within your actual PayPal account and the instructions for what to do are actually on here. Um, once you have changed those settings then you need to just tick this box to confirm that you have configured your PayPal account. Then you're ready to set up your form. So what you do is you'll go to new form. Now I'm assuming that you know the basics of using Gravity Forms and setting up a form but let's just call this one um, test form create a form and then we need to think about well what do we actually need to know about these um, people when they're going to buy so let's assume what we want to do is we're going to need their name we're going to need their address and you might want to change the formatting of the address like you might want might not want zip slash postal code you might want postcode for example um, you might not want to put the country in let's just look at what options there are here so we can we can actually set a default country um, we can say no we only want to be in the United States Sandy's actually in the US so she might want to do that um, we can say to hide the state field we can have a default state like that um, Sandy's in California so she might have most of her customers in California so she would probably choose California as being the default state okay so let's assume you've got this set up how you want it you will probably want the person's email address um, you'll probably want their phone number now I'm just going to show you one of the things in phone number that sometimes confuses people if you're in the US the default is perfectly fine if you're not in the US if you're one of the 97 percent of people who is not in the US you might want to change it to international um, otherwise your customers are going to be forced to enter their phone number in that format and that doesn't really work in a lot of countries but because this is a demo for Sandy let's leave it as the US format Okay. Um, by the way, most of these things you're going to want to make compulsory, so you're need to go, going to need to t tick the required box for all of these. Okay, But I'm not going to do that because it's just too, too much work at this stage. Now, so you've got their name, address, email, phone. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else you might want to know. There might be some more information that you want to ask them like you know delivery date you know required delivery date or please give me some details about you know what it is you want for customization that sort of thing in which case you'd be going to be entering a paragraph text or a single line text but let's assume that this is just the basics that you want next we need to start entering some products now Sandy asked how can you add an image to this so I'm assuming that she wants a situation where she's got a picture and then she's got the product um, detail and somebody will see a picture and then they will um, say okay how many of this particular product does she want do they want so in order to put an image in it's a little bit complex we need to use some HTML code so we'll click on HTML and then we're going to open this up 
and we're going to need to, I'm going to get rid of the label because we don't need a label unless you want to say um, you know what the name of the product is here so um, I've actually got a picture of a cowboy on here so let's say we are selling cowboys I know we're not selling cowboys but you get the idea so we're, we're going to be selling cowboys so we put cowboy as our label and then in here we need to put the HTML code that is going to make our cowboy picture display now let's go to our media library now I've actually already uploaded into the media library the cowboy so here's one I prepared earlier as they say in the classics so let's go and have a look at edit on that and over here you'll be able to copy and paste I'm just going to hit control C on my keyboard or command C if you're on a Mac and that will get you the URL for your image that you um, are going to put into the form so we go back to forms. Now to insert an image, we go less than, which is a like a pointy bracket that's pointing off to the left hand side. I M for Mary G, so I M G, which is short for image. And then a space, then S R C, and then equals, and then double quotes, and then we I'm going to do Control V, which or Command V if you're on a Mac, which means paste. And I'm going to do another double quotes to close that. And then I'm going to do a right pointy bracket, bracket, which is a greater than sign. So that's all you need to do to put an image into the HTML. Which So it's less than IMG space source, which is SRC, equals quote, and then the URL of the image, and then close the quotes, and then a greater than or a right pointy bracket. Okay, So that should put our cowboy picture into this form. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually um, give people a place where they can buy this. So we go down here to pricing fields and we're going to click on product. Okay. Ah, just remember I've got to show you how to set the currency but I'll do that in just a second. So the product name is obviously not product name. Okay. Our product name will say cowboy. Okay. Now there's a few different kinds of things we can do here. There's single products, we can ask them to choose from a drop down list, we can have radio, radio buttons, um, user defined price which means that they're going to actually key in how much they want to pay so it might be you might use that for a donation situation. Um, hidden, I'm not sure why you would use that on this but you know there is, that's, there is an option and um, calculation is where you might have previously had a you know, you might have had something further up the form which says, um, okay, let's say for example you were selling bunches of flowers and it might ask you, well, okay, what kind of roses do you want? And there might be red roses are $6 and white roses are $5. So um, the the calculation will say, okay, let's take the quantity and then depending on whether they're doing red roses or white roses, it'll be the price of the roses that they've chosen. So that will be the price of, that is shown there. So, but anyway, if you've got the... Um, you can, you can, there is excellent documentation at gravityforms.com and so that should be able to help you if you need some of this really detailed information but let's just assume at the stage we're just doing single products okay so let's make our cowboy we'll make him a $500 cowboy now you might want to disable the quantity field because you might say well okay you're only going to buy one of these things especially if you're offering a service or maybe a downloadable product something like that it might not make sense to have a quantity box in there so there's the quantity but in this case let's people let's allow people to buy a whole posse of cowboys okay so now in this case we're not going to make it required because um, we're actually going to add another product and they might not want a cowboy so let's close that so that one's ready to go so our next product just as an exercise to show you how to do this one more time I'm going to add a cowgirl cowgirl so let's go HTML and while that's loading I'll just go back to here and I'll bring up the cowgirl picture now, unfortunately the cowgirl picture is a bit big but hey you can deal with that <laughs> and we'll go here and we'll copy that control C we'll go back here and we're going to edit this next HTML block and we're going to call it cowgirl IMG so it's less than IMG space SRC equals double quotes paste in the URL close the double quotes and a right bracket Okay, so that's putting our cowgirl picture in there. Close that. Then we need to put in a product. And edit this field. And we're going to call this one cowgirl. And she can be $500 as well, just because we're equal opportunity people here. 
and so that's that now don't forget that you've got the advanced tab um, where you might want to change you know like display this for some some cases and not display for other things and that type of thing but most of the time you won't need to use that so let's close that now this is the most basic um, the, it's a really good idea to put a total in here so we just hit total and we don't really need to edit this at all um, because and that's going to display the total of the you know the whole form once it's filled out we can also put in things like options so um, if we want people to be able to choose between um, different size cowboys for example um, we can put that in there we can also put in a quantity box or a shipping box so there's other things that you can do but just to keep this simple so that Sandy understands the basics then that's what we do so so then we go update form but wait there's more okay so form updated successfully now next thing we need to do is we need to go back to PayPal so we've got PayPal in our main thing it says you don't have any PayPal feeds configured let's create one okay, so what we need to do now is we need to say okay we've got a great form there but we need to tell the system that when this form gets submitted it's a PayPal form so first thing we need to do is we need to put in our PayPal email address that's my PayPal email address feel, feel free to send me money select a transaction type products and services select a form test form now what we need to do is we need to um, give PayPal some fields based or we need to map up the PayPal fields with the ones in our form so our form fields first name last name and email and address and address line 2 wouldn't it be nice if it did this like by default anyway state and zip and country all done okay now, there's a few other things in here that you can do as well that um, if you need to do any of these I suggest you have a look at the documentation if it's not obvious what they mean um, one that you might want to do is um, not asking them to include a shipping address so for example if you're selling a service that you're going to like send them an email or something that would be a good way to do it um, one really good one is send notifications only when the payment is received so uh, what that means is that um, you know sometimes people like spammers will fill out this form but then they won't actually go ahead and do the PayPal payment thing at the other end because they're obviously not, not going to pay to be able to spam you so um, you might not want to get all the emails related to all these spam form submissions so you can do it you can tick that to say send the notifications only when the payment is received but that's getting a little bit complex here so let's just save this okay now that's all ready to go we can of course go into test mode so that we can try it out which um, I'm not actually going to try it out I'm just going to show what the form looks like so the next thing we need to do is we need to go to pages and add a new page so that we've actually got a place for this form to appear so we're going to call this um, um, form page of course you'll call it something like buy my stuff or something Hang on, let's spell it right Christine form page we go here we go add form now don't get confused here there's two add form buttons on my explanation because I've actually got another form uh, formidable forms loaded into this particular installation as well but the one we need is called as a gravity form so you need to look for the button that says add gravity form so here we go add gravity form we don't want to display the description the form is called test form so we go insert form and we can just publish it if you really want to you can add more stuff that's going to appear before the form but in this case we're not going to bother so let's go to um, view page or just open it up in a new tab and here's our form so we've got um, test form we've got the name the address the email the phone here's our picture of our cowboy here's where we buy the cowboy here's our picture of our cowgirl and here's where we buy the cowgirl and there's our submit button at the bottom now so let's just try it out a minute let's say we want one cowboy and look at that that total button isn't doing anything what do we do oh yeah sorry I had to hit the tab key to go to the next box to in order to um, get it to update the total and we want two cowgirls so our total is fifteen hundred dollars and we hit submit now I'm not sure what's going to happen now because I haven't tested it any further than this there was a problem with your submission ah because I had put this in as being um, one two three as being compulsory didn't I three four five six seven I think that's right um, 
Okay, so we've still got that as one and two. Submit. And cross your fingers. Got your fingers crossed. Yes, very good. So now we've got cowboy, $500, two cowgirls at $1,000, item total is $1,500, and it's asking me to log into PayPal, which obviously I can't do because I can't log into my own PayPal account to pay myself some money. So that's how you do it. I hope this answers the questions that you had, Sandy. Um, if anybody else has any questions about this, I'm available at geckogullywebsites.com, and um, I'd love to hear from you if you've got any problems with it. Okay, bye.